thanks everyone for, for, for jumping on this webinar. This is the eighth webinar that we've, uh, we've done in this series. Um, this one's kind of exciting. It's, uh, it's a what's new and a tips and tricks webinar. So, um, you know, as, as we're, we're doing demos and we're talking to customers, a lot of times, uh, you know, we, uh, we're learning new things about Tilia Phoenix all the time, different shortcuts, different uh, things that even, even uh, you know, us here who, who present and, and who use the software all the time don't know. Um, so we've decided to compile kind of a, uh, a, a whole list of, of things you, that you may have not known uh, about Tilia uh, Phoenix and, and kind of present those to you and hopefully make your lives a little easier. So uh, yeah, without any further ado, I'll, I'll introduce uh, Tyler Thompson, Director of uh, Solutions and Technologies at Tilia Labs. He's going to uh, present to us today. Great, thanks George, can you hear me? Yes, we can hear you and we can see you. <laughs> Perfect. All right, sorry about that. So yeah, as George mentioned, my name is Tyler Thompson. I'm the Solutions Director here at Tilia Labs. And I will be hosting the webinar today. I um, have been in printing and packaging ever since graduating from uh, Clemson University where I studied graphic communications. And uh, I'm based here in South Carolina, hold a master's degree uh, and computer information systems from Denver University. And uh, yeah, if you have any questions or uh, want to reach out, feel free to contact me at tyler at tilialabs.com. So just to give you an overview of what we'll be talking about, uh, I'll just briefly give an introduction to Tilia Labs. Uh, then I'll dive right into uh, tips and tricks. And like George mentioned, the tips and tricks will be applicable to all versions of Phoenix. And then it will be a very technical uh, webinar. So I'll be running through the application, um, going through a compiled list of, of tips and tricks that we've learned and uh, that we find uh, our customers see useful. And then we will look at what's new. So we'll give you a sneak peek of uh, version 7.0 and some of the cool, exciting new features that, that we're going to be releasing uh, with 7.0. And then at the end, I'll just, uh, there's a, a ton of new features with 7.0. So um, I'll, I'll share a list of uh, some additional features that are exciting and then just open it up for, for Q&A. But number two and three, again, are going to be technical demonstrations of the, uh, of the application. So a little bit about Tilia Labs, we're a software company and uh, we recently were awarded the uh, 2019 InterTech Award for our true AI technology. We'll see a little bit of that today, but uh, if you're not familiar with our true AI technology, I highly advise uh, you take a peek at our YouTube channel and um, yeah, we have various uh, demonstrations and explanations of um, yeah, how true AI can can be used uh, yeah, to make smarter uh, costing and, and estimation and imposition decisions um, with Phoenix. But we're a software company. We were founded in April of 2012, so relatively newer to the, the printing and packaging space. Uh, we're based in Ottawa, Canada, and we have year to date just over 500 licenses sold at Phoenix, so very mature product uh, at this point. Um, we also have global distribution in, in over 32 countries. So if you um, need a contact uh, or are looking to, to get in touch or, or trying to figure out how you can purchase um, or get a demo of uh, Phoenix, feel free to reach out and we'll, we'll hook you up with the, uh, the distributor in your uh, particular country. So we have uh, various other products outside of Tilia Phoenix. We'll, we're going to focus on our flagship product, Tilia Phoenix, but we also have, um, again, on our YouTube channels, you can learn more about our other products, Tilia Griffin and Tilia Aries. And then we have also Tilia Cloud, which is our cloud-based licensing platform uh, for all of our applications. So let's dive in to some tips and tricks. So again, we're going to start uh, and I'm going to read through and give you kind of a high level explanation, uh, explanation of what the, the tip or, tri or trick is. Uh, and then I'll dive into some screenshots uh, and a demo of um, what this particular tip or trick is. 
And then we're going to record this, or we are recording this, so uh, don't feel like you have to be jotting down notes. Just sit back and, yeah, just watch. So uh, the first thing, speed up your setup time um, by setting up uh, some presets or defaults inside of Phoenix. So by setting up a default press uh, and for your press, you can set up default marks and a default sheet and plate. Um, this will allow you to, during job creation or when you're just uh, starting uh, a new job inside of Phoenix, um, have a nice, more clean layout uh, look and feel than um, on the left. So if you're used to uh, just saying file new um, or clicking a little plus sign in the top right corner to start a new job inside of Phoenix, you may see the, the left hand side, which is just no defaults are set. It's just kind of a blank canvas versus the right hand side where I've set up a default um, plate, a default sheet size and a default press um, just to make it a little bit cleaner. So to do this, um, we're gonna start by creating a new job. And you can see when I create a new job, it's blank. And then if I go into the preferences in Phoenix, so Phoenix preferences or edit preferences on a, on a PC, um, and you go down to the job category, you can see there's this new job default press option. And in here, you can go and choose one of your presses from your press uh, library. And in my case, I'm just going to use an offset press. And then inside of my press, there's a couple things you need to set up. Um, under media layout in that particular default press that you selected, you can set a sheet and you can also set a plate. And what that does is just sets a default sheet size and a default, a default stock and sheet size and a default plate size for that particular press. And then you can also set up default marks for your press. Um, and that's under the, the marks tab uh, under your press. So now you can see when I start a new job um, in Phoenix, I'm going to get presented with this instead of just a blank white canvas, a nice sheet, uh, my default sheet size, so 28 by 40, or be one press sheet, my plate, my sheet to plate offsets are already set. I've got a few marks that are set from my, um, from my press. And uh, now when I start just uh, dragging in a file, you can see that at the bottom here, uh, because I've already set up my default sheet in press, uh, all of my marks are also added um, automatically. So it just makes it faster inside of Phoenix to get started. Okay. <clears throat> um, Another tip, quickly editing product properties. So in Phoenix, uh, you can batch update properties of products that you've brought inside uh, or brought into Phoenix for planning. So when you um, import uh, either a CSV file or drag in uh, a number of different products, in my case, I've got 13 products there on the left-hand side of Phoenix. Um, I can shift select uh, all of my products and uh, in version seven, you can just command A uh, to select everything or control A to select all of your products. And then I can uh, interactively in the right hand side batch um, uh, specified product properties. So for example, if I want to set all of the bleed, um, uh, all of my, I want to change all the bleeds for, for one or many products, I just select them and uh, in the properties in the right there, I can, uh, change my uh, my property so i'll select some items here and in this case i'm going to start by editing uh, the bleed so you can see when i edit the bleed immediately uh, and interactively in the ui i'll just rewind it a little bit i started at a, uh, an eighth of an inch bleed i change it to a sixteenth of an inch and then you can see uh, that's uh, being updated in real time in the ui and now i'm going to switch it back so it makes it faster just to edit your, your properties on um, multiple products. I can also set the, the spacing. I can change my stock in this case, my bleed. Um, and then once I set all these properties, um, now that I'm gonna change my spacing to a quarter inch in between all of my items here, set my bleed. Now I, I go and reimpose the file using Imposition AI. 
double click to apply and there we go now i've got my my quarter inch so um quarter inch spacing for each product so uh, a half of an inch in between each product um yeah just by by shift selecting uh, my products my my product list okay so get more details from imposition ai so um there's this uh small i button um that you'll see in the imposition ai window and uh, when you click that i button from your list of results in imposition ai you're going to get more of a detailed breakdown uh, about each layout that phoenix has planned um, this of course is, is only applicable if you uh, have imposition ai as part of your license configuration so let's take a look at what this looks like so i'm inside of phoenix and what I'm going to do is start by running a plan. So as Imposition AI is generating my um, many results, you can see uh, in that list of results in the Imposition AI window, I've got this I button. And your icon will turn into a hand, which allows you to click on that I. And I can also sort my results in Imposition AI. So when you're looking at this, this large list, and in this case, Phoenix generated you know, 300 plus results in, in six seconds here. And um, this list is challenging to look at, uh, but we, we make it easy to look at. We, we by default, sort this list by cost, uh, our, our list of results. But um, in Phoenix, you're, or in the Imposition AI window, you can sort these uh, in various other ways. You can sort it based on time. So if I want to see, you know, what, what result is going to yield me the, the least amount of waste or the least amount of time on press, I can sort by sheet usage. So based on um, my items uh, and my sheet sizes, you know, if I sort by sheet usage, the top result now is going to give me uh, the best uh, sheet usage uh, percentage. And then sort by run length. Now I'm going to get the you know the the array of results sorted by um, uh, the run length. So the run length at the top being the the least amount of uh, of sheets versus all the way at the bottom is going to be the most amount of sheets, sixty three thousand. And then by layout count. So layout count is uh, sorting based on the number of press forms or sheets that were uh, that that Imposition AI generated. So this allows you to sort the results. Um, and then when you sort the results, if you click on the I button, this is going to now show you uh, a lot more information about this particular plan that Phoenix generated. So when I look at this, I can now get a breakdown of, and you're going to see some additional information in here because I'm using version seven. Um, but in, in, in either scenario, with uh, even with version six, if you click on the I, you're going to get a breakdown um, and get a lot more details about this job. So uh, the total time on press, the total cost, you're going to get a breakdown of uh, your cutting costs, your die costs, your waste. And then it, as you scroll through this window with the arrows, um, we then break out details about each particular layout. So in this case, we've got two layouts. Um, and then we uh, sort or uh, display the cost and the information that pertains to this particular layout. So you can see now this particular layout is on a 29 by 20 inch sheet. Here's my run length for this layout. I get all the information with my costing, my sheet turns for my guillotine cutter, and then layout number two, same thing. All right. So rerunning imposed press forms by using uh, or using the optimize tool. So <laughs> what optimize allows you to do is uh, as you're going through um, and looking at the different results from imposition AI, optimize allows you then to re-optimize or re-evaluate uh, layouts to see different scenarios. So, what I'm going to start doing is I'm going to run Imposition AI, and Imposition AI is going to suggest a, uh, a plan here. 
And I'm just going to apply the first one. So this first one, um, Phoenix determined uh, uh, or imposed on five different press forms here. Um, so I'll double click to apply that. And then if I look at each layout, you can see my five different layouts here in the left hand side. So I can double click uh, on a layout and run optimize. And what that's going to do is, is optimize is going to look at um, my layout products. So these products that uh, Phoenix impose on this particular press form. And when I run optimize, Phoenix now just generated, uh, you can see almost instantaneously, um, for this, this particular set of products on this particular press form, when I click optimize, Phoenix blows out about you know, 171 different ways of, of taking that, those same products with their same copy counts uh, and looking and evaluating, in this case, uh, different ways of, of imposing it on a 29 by 20 inch sheet here or in uh, a, a B2 sheet. <clears throat> but then it gets a little more interesting because then I could say, well, you know, Phoenix said to run it on a 29 by, by uh, 20 or B2 press sheet. But now I want Phoenix to re-optimize this job. And uh, you can see it, it's costing us about $831. But I want to re-optimize and evaluate these products against 38 different sheet sizes. So when I run it again, now you can see there's, there's a significant amount of, uh, of more results here, 900 different ways of running this. Um, and again, Phoenix is going to sort it by cost. So in this case, it's more cost effective to run it on a smaller sheet size. And then I'm going to switch it. Uh, in this case to instead of a, a half sheet, my B2 sheet, I'm gonna switch it to a B1 sheet. So a 40 inch sheet and, a, and then I can just rerun it. And again, I can evaluate the costs of, of running this particular layout and this particular set of items uh, on di against different sheet sizes. Um, uh, if I get into production and I don't have this particular sheet size, you know, it's a click of a button to reimpose or, or test on, on different sheet sizes and compare costs. So now I've switched to layout number two. So I double click on layout two. And now I'm reevaluating again, uh, different scenarios for this, this, this layout and these set of products. So you can see my cost here is $1,700. Um, but now when I evaluate it on, on a larger sheet, for example, um, you can see my run length was originally 15,000 sheets on a, on a B2 press sheet. Now, when I plan it on my 48 or my 40 by 28, my B1 press sheet, my run length goes way down about half um, and my cost goes down. And so does my time on press. So I can evaluate these different scenarios. And now if I wanna move this to a digital press, for example, um, I can, instead of just my CD102, I can switch and say, I wanna run this uh, on my Indigo 10,000, and maybe I wanna run it on my A4 or my 19 by 13 inch sheet. And again, instantaneously, uh, Phoenix reimposes the job under those conditions, recosts the job. Um, so no more templates. Uh, yeah, and, and just the ability to quickly evaluate uh, different scenarios after Imposition AI has already ran is, is a really nice feature with Optimize. Okay, smart place and align. So um, inside of Phoenix, uh, once you have generated a result um, or just really at, at any point um, on, a, on a press sheet or uh, when you're inside of, of Phoenix, um, and you've got items that are already uh, nested up on a sheet, we've got a feature that allows you to, in, in my case, I've got, um, you know, I've, I've got this blank area on my press sheet that I could potentially fill in with additional products. So I'm gonna add more products. I've got some business cards here uh, that I'm just gonna drag into the UI and add those into Phoenix. And then with our Smart Place tool, in the top left, Smart Place is, a, is kind of a hidden gem and allows you to draw a marquee in an area. Uh, like you see here, I've, I've just marquee selected this white space. And what the Smart Place tool is gonna do is query that list of results of unplanned items. So because I've just recently dragged these uh, uh, business cards in, 
Um, these are unplanned and smart place uh, is suggesting or, or saying and querying that list and saying, hey, these items are going to fit in that marquee area that you selected. So um, then I can test different rotations here and now I can potentially fit another one. So I'm just going to draw another marquee selection, grab my next business card and I just double click to apply it. And then uh, Phoenix has got some really nice alignment tools. So, um, you know, once you're at any point, if you need to interact with, uh, with what Phoenix has planned, um, we've got a number of different ways of, of making that process faster. So in this case, I'm going to uh, select these three products. And what I wanna do is just simply center these business cards um, in between these two products. So I draw or select those products I change my key object to selection. And now with those objects selected, I can distribute those um, with our distribution feature here uh, horizontally and then space out um, equally. Now what I'm gonna do is align and set a key object. So um, I've just selected this postcard here. And you can see uh, when I click on this object again, it sets that as the key object. And now I've got my alignment feature similar to, to Illustrator where I can align my objects to the top to snap them uh, in place uh, and position them correctly. So the smart place and the alignment features. Another really nice feature in Phoenix is the ability to just swap items by holding command or control and clicking. Um, so once Phoenix has generated a form, um, now if I want to, for example, uh, swap uh, these orange postcards with uh, this uh, non-orange postcard, I can just shift select multiple items. I can uh, point and click, so I can just select one, or I can select one in that case there. I just point and click, hold command, or I can grab an entire row, and I hold command and marquee the, the next row, and you can see I can quickly swap rows or columns um, just by holding the command key. So setting your press form up uh, for press, adjusting, potentially uh, adjusting colors or, or spacing out colors, uh, across the press form is is really simple just with uh, holding command on a on a Mac or control on a PC um, and clicking to adjust. Handling bleed overlap. So another um, pretty common question that we get is uh, in scenarios where you're running your items knife to knife. Um, how how you know, is there a way in, inside of Phoenix, in this case, we've got a folding card example here, but this is applicable really to, to any scenario where you've got bleed that's potentially overlapping your product. Um, and in this case, you can see I've got uh, spots here where a blue tab is, is bumping up uh, and, and running single knife against my, um, my facing panel here. So um, in this scenario, uh, well, I can just drag and drop my artwork into my, my die. Um, to simplify my CAD based stuff and repeat. But now I need to handle my bleed overlaps. And if I go to tools and overlaps tool, uh, this tool will interactively walk you through your press form and identify and highlight uh, bleed overlaps that are, are happening um, on your press form. So when I click the next button, you can see it, Phoenix is going to zoom in right to that, right to that uh, particular area um, and allow you to interactively then define, do I want to split that bleed? Do I want to um, allow A to, to bleed over B or B to uh, bleed over A? So I make my selection and then you can see Phoenix will um, automatically uh, um, redraw that bleed mask uh, and allow you to then move on to the next bleed overlap where I can resolve the same. And in this case, I want to uh, set my A um, to bleed over my, my glue flap here. And then I want to resolve the same on this entire press form. So I can click resolve same to handle uh, and manage all of those overlaps. And now I'm done with my, my bleed overlap. And then uh, another slick um, 
uh, feature in Phoenix is the ability to just drag and drop marks on a crash sheet. So in this case, I'm just dragging a gradation strip uh, at the bottom left there. Um, and then if I wanna take this gradation strip and copy it over to another spot on my, my press sheet, I just can hold Alt and click. And that is then going to just make a copy of that mark. Uh, and wherever I Alt click, it's going to center that right on my uh, arrow and allow you to then quickly copy and paste marks uh, just by holding Alt and clicking um, to duplicate your mark. Okay, so bleed overlaps and press mark duplication. Okay, so mapping custom marks, um, mapping custom uh, inks uh, inside of a mark interactively. So um, what do I mean by this? Well, in Phoenix, you can have a custom mark and when you have a custom PDF mark, um, in this case, I've, I've got a, a patch of uh, uh, slur marks here. And when I drag that onto uh, the artboard, you can see that it's getting, uh, that slur mark's getting copied in each one of my products. And then if I zoom in and I select on that particular mark, in my properties window here, I have the ability to then map these inks. So this is a, an external PDF uh, custom mark here. And in that PDF, you can see I've got four inks. And Phoenix then allows you to customize, if you, if you uh, don't like the default uh, mapping behavior, you can go in product by product and re-specify what ink you actually want to map in a custom mark. So in this case, I'm going to turn off two inks and just keep my magenta and cyan for my slur marks. And then while we're on the mark topic, um, the ability to draw vector marks and then preflate your marks inside of Phoenix is another feature that uh, is, is commonly overlooked. So um, being able to draw marks on the fly. So in this case, I've, I've got a press form that's already, uh, that's already set up. Now I just want to add a couple, maybe bear bars or, or uh, um, ghosting strips here uh, on the, I'll just draw it on all four sides. Um, so you can activate your drawing tools inside of Phoenix by right clicking in your menu bar. So you can see up, up at the top right here, if I right click, um, it's, it's hidden by default, but you've got these drawing tools inside of Phoenix. And then that activates, you know, your rectangle tool, your line tool, your point tool, in this case, I'm just gonna draw a couple squares and then paint those squares with cyan, magenta, yellow, and then at the bottom, I'll draw one in black. And then just because I'll add a couple uh, circles here and resize them to an inch. So one inch by one inch, and then align those accordingly with my alignment tools. And then, um, so drawing, drawing um, custom marks is, is simple in Phoenix. You can just, just hand draw them. Um, and then we also have the ability to pre-flight marks before you send this press form to, into production. So if you go to tools and mark inspection, uh, this mark inspection tool is really nice. It allows you to, you can see I can turn off my, my products. I can hide them or ghost them out. Um, but what this mark tool is going to do is, uh, is uh, Phoenix is going to then highlight all of the areas on your press form where you have press marks um, that aren't artwork. So uh, this allows you to then quickly, whoops, quickly see what marks are on my file um, before you send them to press just to confirm and pre-flight your marks uh, prior to generating plates or sending it to a digital press. Okay. All right, so what's new? Well, there's a ton of stuff new. I'm gonna try and um, move, this, move through this pretty quickly here. We've got about uh, 10 minutes. So um, drag and drop CSV import, this is really nice. Uh, so in Phoenix now, you have the ability, it's very simple to show, but I've got a CSV file and we fully support now in version 7.0 the ability to just drag your CSV file directly onto the interface and then start running plan. Uh, so this eliminates a handful of clicks 
um, by setting up the default mapping, you can just yeah, simply drag and drop your, your data file, your CSV file into Phoenix and Phoenix will know exactly what to do with it. So then the question is, well, how do you find the files uh, from my, my CSV file? How do you, you know, go and find the artwork or the CAD files? Well, in Phoenix 7.0, we have a new intelligent file search for both CAD and artwork. So it will recursively search. Um, if I set up my presets, I'll, I'll import a CSV file here. And then in this import window, you'll see now we've got this new file search tab, which allows us to specify uh, some logic here for going and searching um, uh, folders for your artwork file that's specified in, in CAD files that's specified in your, in your uh, CSV data file. It will also search recursively your subfolders. So um, this makes it just a lot easier than, than going and finding the files and dragging and dropping them in or, or having to write entire file paths uh, to files. You can just use our recursive file search um, inside of the CSV import. We also have introduced drag and drop file name automation. So if you don't have a data file, but rather you have, uh, with a CSV file, you can specify any property you want um, in Phoenix and just makes it really easy to import your products. What we've done though, um, because uh, a lot of our customers don't have you know, IT or, or ways of, of you know, producing a data file, we've made an intelligent, um, uh, custom file naming convention. So you could just, you know, using separators or prefixes, set up a prefix, maybe an underscore or a dash or a dollar sign. Um, and then after that prefix, you can set the, the, the product property. Um, so in this case, I want to specify my product name, my, my ordered quantity and my stock in my group. And these can be optional or required in the file uh, name. And when that checkbox is turned on in your preferences, that allows you to then just grab a, a select a, a ton of files um, and drop them into Phoenix and Phoenix will automatically set, you know, your, your quantity, your substrate based on the file name. It's a really nice new feature. And Phoenix is even smarter now. Um, so in this case, we're going to grab uh, two files um, and Phoenix is going to take and understand a CF2 file, a CAD file and an artwork PDF file and marry them up together with just one drag and drop action. And you'll notice Phoenix is gonna to continue to just get smarter and smarter when it comes to drag and drop. So um, you'll see a, a lot of really interesting new features with drag and drop uh, in the coming release. But in this case, you can see, I just grabbed a PDF and CF2 file, dragged them into the Phoenix UI and bam, it will uh, detect the shape from the PDF, as long as you have a uh, ink or a die in your, your PDF file, artwork file, and then automatically snap it, rotate it correctly um, uh, based on the CF2 file, all with one drag and drop action. We've uh, introduced the ability to specify more default properties um, in the product by default. So, this was a big feature request from our customer base. Um, so now in, in the new version of Phoenix, you're going to see a ton of, of more options for setting default uh, properties when you drag in or import a product just to make it faster for setup. Um, we also added the ability to create multiple products from a single PDF. So Phoenix, uh, we're leveraging Phoenix's shape extraction to batch generate products based on one um, PDF file. So you'll see in the preferences a new shape search uh, for multiple in the product, uh, in the Phoenix preferences. And then when that's checked on, you can see in this case, I've got a PDF file that's got a ton of shapes in here, right? These are uh, a bunch of vinyl decals. And um, what I'm going to do, because these are all closed shapes, I just drag that PDF file in to the UI and bam. Phoenix will automatically generate, you know, in this case, 28 products, one product for each closed path in one foul swoop, uh, just based off of that one PDF file. All the product properties will be set from your defaults or from the file naming convention oops, um, that you set up. Yeah, let's fast forward it a little bit. And then once that's done, uh, you can simply, 
well, show you here. Uh, you can set your bleeds to your products. You can see Phoenix has already just masked out that shape. Um, and then you're off your, your merry way, imposing these, uh, these items more efficiently on your roll or on your sheet. Uh, small feature, but huge request um, in Phoenix, just the ability to right click and mirror your front and back graphic. So you can quickly set your front and back based off of your front and just this is very common in, in wide format into cut uh, workflows. So you'll see that now when you right click in version 7.0 um, to mirror your graphics. Uh, okay, custom product properties via CSV. So um, Phoenix now with version seven allows an unlimited number of custom product properties. So if we take a look at this, I've got a CSV file, data file, and in this CSV file, you can see I'm, I'm passing a, a, a column called custom text. And um, when I import the CSV file, I'm now, uh, I now have the ability to click the plus sign and add a custom property. So I'm just gonna make that uh, name, the same name as the column that was in my uh, CSV file. So you can see custom text. Now when I import these items, if I go to my properties window on the right, you can see, uh, hello, there's world on product number three, it says Tilia Labs rocks. So I've just imported from the CSV file and now what I'm going to do is make a mark. So I'll create a new text mark and I'm going to extract that custom property or that custom tax um, into a mark here. So product.custom.customText, because that's what I called it, paint it black. And then I'm just going to drag that product mark. And now you can see I've just flown my uh, text in directly from my CSV file dynamically, oops, into a custom mark uh, for each one of my products there. So this allows you to just yeah, generate variable data or, or um, really do a, a number of interesting things with uh, custom properties. We've also introduced ADA compliant Braille. So um, any of our, this is another big, big uh, feature request from our wide format and folding cart and customer base. Just the ability to, again, because now we have these custom properties, we can flow custom properties in for like uh, hotel room numbers or really any custom tax and then generate ADA compliant Braille or uh, well, a, a number of different Braille formats. Um, here in the US, ADA is, uh, is pretty popular, but there we go. So you can set your dot diameters in, in configuration and settings um, for, your, for your Braille and view it in real time. Okay, just wrapping up here. Um, customizable no print zones. This was another big feature request for perfecting presses uh, or just really in any scenario, you, we can have an unlimited number of um, on your press of no print zones vertically or horizontally. And then you can specify where you want those no print zones to, uh, to occur. So in this case, you can see I've got a no print zone dead center, uh, 10 millimeters wide um, on my press. And then you can see over there to the right, when Phoenix is generating a layout, it's gonna keep that 10 millimeter um, gap of no print area uh, and separate the sheet in half for my perfecting press. And then, okay, a couple more quick things. Just uh, inside of Phoenix, we now have the ability to, again, pass a custom property, but instead of a mark, I'm gonna use this custom property um, in my imposition AI for anti-mixing. So um, when I run Imposition AI, you can see now we've got this new concept of plan rules. And plan rules allows us to have really an unlimited number of rules where we can pass custom information to then sort and group my items that I'm nesting uh, in Phoenix or planning in Phoenix together in some kind of intelligent uh, fashion with, with customized rules. So, um, in this case, I'm just going to keep all of my reds with my reds, so all my jobs uh, together, so my reds will be with my reds, my oranges will be with my oranges, my layouts, and just it makes it easier to, to group and, and keep your items and products together. And then the last thing I'll wrap up with uh, is our concept of devices. So 
Phoenix now has a concept of, of devices and costing of devices. So in Phoenix 7.0, we've released uh, the ability to add finishing equipment. Um, and in this case, if you have a Zoom, we have a real time uh, connection with Zoom where we get true cut time information um, from uh, the device, which allows us to make even smarter, uh, more uh, accurate cost estimations um, in planning when we're connecting to both our, our digital press and our, uh, our digital finishing equipment. Um, oh, okay, Very, last feature, promise. Um, this is our, uh, our we, we've now with version 7.0 released the ability to uh, in closed books. So um, in Phoenix version 7.0, we now support hook in positioning for both um, digital web and sheet fed offset sheet fed uh, digital. But now you can see I've got my JDF folding patterns. I can set all of my uh, settings as you would expect um, for a folded book in positioning, my creep. Um, I can set sections and lips and laps and then flow my pages in and impose these on the press form. Another huge feature, big customer uh, request um, is our, our support for book work inside of Phoenix. There we go. All right, George, I'll, I'll hand it over to you. Uh, sorry, I'm, I'm like four minutes uh, over here. Um. <laughs> yeah, no worries. Thank you. Uh... Thank you for this presentation, Tyler. And uh, yeah, uh, we are up against uh, the, the end of this webinar. So uh, unfortunately, we didn't, didn't, don't have time for questions. But um, you can, uh, of course, always contact us at uh, um, sales at tillylabs.com. Um, we'll send out a follow-up uh, email for this uh, webinar with the recording um, and uh, yes, yeah, so links to the past webinars and, and we'll give you the ability to, to ask questions uh, um, through that email follow-up. So uh, really appreciate everyone for jumping on. Uh, thanks for uh, everyone who jumped on to multiple uh, webinars this last series. This has been a, a fun experience. I think we got a lot of good positive feedback. So we will uh, we'll continue to do these in the future. Have a fantastic day, everyone. Thank you.